today I'm becoming the rock star of my dreams. It's good. <laughs> Hello my queens, so if you have been following me for a while, I've been on this healing journey of mine for the past like five years. I started when I was 22, kind of had a spiritual awakening, went to therapy, and um, not only did I change, but also the content on my channel changed. My inner reality really, really started to transform my external reality, which is why I made this TikTok. This video was kind of inspired by that. Basically, I've just been reclaiming a lot of myself, like honoring my inner child. But people always ask me, what is honoring your inner child or inner child work? It's the part of you that's deep inside, that's playful, joyful, creative, unapologetic. It's who you were before the world kind of programmed and kind of just beat you down into this watered down version of yourself or who you thought you needed to be in order to survive. Um, not thrive, but survive. And this video was also inspired by Jenny's video. It was like her just basically realizing that this is your sim in this simulation, in this matrix we call life on planet Earth. I definitely recommend watching the movie Soul by Pixar and The Matrix. We're gonna basically dress up my avatar. It's gonna be a mind, body, and soul type of thing. I'm gonna tell you how I've been reinventing my mind, body, and soul. I'm gonna do my makeup. as I do my hair. Also, T3 came out with a new product. This is the T3 Fit. I've been using this one, which you can tell this one is significantly smaller. It's just as mighty though, but look at, it's all dyed red. Do you see? The tip is dyed red because of my hair. We are gonna use this today because we are celebrating the new T3 Fit. It's smaller. Look at that. It also comes with an attachment. This one I'm also probably going to dye red. I changed into a robe because it was cold. Um, my hair is like halfway dry now. It's still really damp, but I'm going to put some hair oil on it. Anyways, I decided to dye my hair red because I've been wanting to for a while honestly ever since I was a kid but I never thought that I could pull it off because it's such a um, punchy color and I don't know I just felt like it was a big change because I'm not sure if you know but when I first dyed my hair teal I absolutely hated it because the biggest insecurity that I have and that I'm still working on is that it has everything to do with my physical appearance I just feel not pretty. I genuinely feel like a monstrous, ugly, disgusting ogre inside. That is how I see myself. And so even though this era of my life, which is like 2018, 2019, and even 2017, I think she's cute and everything, but it's really hard for me to look at these photos because I was pretty much the most conventionally beautiful I, I've been, I feel. Like out of my looks, we're just talking about looks. I had black, long, luscious hair. I was dre dressing very minimalistically, very chic and very girly in my eyes. And even though I look like that, I didn't see myself that way. I was the most self-loathing, felt the most unlovable, most unworthy at this time. And so it's really hard for me to like look back and see. In 2019, when I decided to dye in my hair teal, I was having like three or four mental breakdowns a year and I was at my wit's end. I was dating someone who was just not there emotionally and that wasn't his fault. I just didn't know that it wasn't my fault. I made it my fault. I made it that I wasn't pretty enough. 
a lot of the times I wasn't good enough and so I was just over it so I decided to do the one thing that I thought I would never do which is dye my beautiful black hair because for so long that was like a safety blanket of mine I felt like that was the thing that everyone said was really pretty that I had even on the internet um, in real life people would always compliment my beautiful long luscious black hair if you notice I never ever wore my hair up I never did like a half do I always like hit it long and I always had that like bombshell wavy Victoria's Secret hair because that's what was pretty at the time do you remember when we were all having balayages and using this 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 right here to make it that beautiful um, chef's kiss anyways i never thought i could ever have short hair because i thought short hair was for like pretty girls not ogres like me and i could certainly never pull off like a different hair color and so at this point i was just like f it f it all and so i went to my hairdresser and then i looked in my mirror when i got it and it absolutely just ruined me i felt the uh, i felt even uglier i felt like a, i felt like a genuine ogre now because my hair was green but eventually after like four months everyone was complimenting me and people were just saying like i feel like this is the hair color that grows out of your head naturally like i'm surprised that you don't have like teal pubes and so um, I just really grew into it and I really loved it. And then along with that, I never ever 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 thought I could have short hair because I thought that was reserved for only beautiful people, not imposters like myself. And so a couple months ago, I decided I just need to cut it off because I'm tired of hiding behind this hair, this heavy, heavy, heavy hair, not only physically, but emotionally. Hopefully, hopefully one day I'll be so detached from traditional ideals of beauty, of conventional beauty that I can shave my head because that would be sick. I, I, <laughs> Also, this is the new T3 Fit and T3 is actually sponsoring this video so thank you so much. Um, but what I really love about this hair dryer is that it's actually 30% more compact or it's just a more compact design than the full size dryer. Like look at that. And it's just really easy to use. It's so easy to store but it's still really powerful and mighty. Like it has dried my hair so quickly because even though I might have shorter hair, I have a lot of hair. It's very... It comes with three heat settings, if you can see right there, it comes with three heat settings, two speed settings, and I typically like to use the middle one because my hair has been bleached, so it also has this ion air technology which is really cool because it basically just infuses a bunch of negative ions while it's blow drying your hair that just helps to dry your hair while maintaining its like shininess its softness and its smoothness like look at this yeah and i'm going to show you a technique that i use to kind of make it a little bit straighter and smoother even though my hair is very naturally straight so i'm just going to take this This is the finished look. If you want to check out T3 or the T3 Fit, which you definitely should, I have a link down below. So please click it and just shop if you want to see. I also believe I will have a discount code for you down below. Hopefully, maybe this weird, deeply introspective hair talk could inspire you to like change up your look. So now we're going to get into outfits. Yes. So I'm talking like Ashley Simpson, Avril Lavigne, Hilary Duff, The Metamorphosis Album, Lindsay Lohan in Freaky Friday, and Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. These girls were my idols because I always, I just miss the early 2000s slash late 90s when there was a lot of like electric guitar and rock band motifs. Like everyone was in a rock band. Like even the most like Disney Channel, like, ugh, pop star like teeny bopper girls like Hilary Duff I absolutely love the video of so yesterday and when she was wearing like that blazer and I she was wearing like a Chanel I think like um chain so good anyways and then Ashley Simpson pieces of me autobiography oh so then I had this realization that I'm 26 and I very much so can be the teen idol of my dreams. I can be the girl that I always looked up to as a little kid. Let's get into it. Everything is pretty much vintage, including this coat, Depop. 
This bag is Poppy Lissiman. My boots are from Mista. I got this for 99 cents. It's like vintage INC. I swear my mom used to shop here all the time. And this is actually a bodycon dress. This jacket I particularly got because it reminds me so much of Penny Lane in Almost Famous. It's actually, I think if you like want to buy it, you just Google Penny Lane coat. And it is fabulous! So this one, I basically just took off my top and put on this top. I got this top from Depop. Same idea, different top from Depop. This reminds me of like that surfer movie, Blue Crush. You know what I mean? I feel like they would wear this and they go surfing. That's why I got it. Also, I would wear this bag. Vibes. This look is giving me quirky cyberpunk art student vibes. Jeans and a tee. One of my subscribers sent me this shirt and she makes them and I'm gonna link her shop down below. But it's a Lizzie McGuire t-shirt from the Lizzie McGuire movie. Also, this bag right now, just like a classic Chanel bag, this is like the bag that I had always wanted when I was like 10. But when I found out from my mom, certain people, certain special people, had, honestly rich people had it, it made me really sad. And she actually ended up going to China for a business trip and she got me a Chanel classic medium bag knockoff for like $150 for when I was 10 years old. And I remember when I was holding it, I was like, I'm gonna get the real one one day. Like, I'm just gonna do it, I don't care. And so, this is so iconic for that reason. Obviously, it's just a bag. The material possessions are as meaningful as you make them, and this is the matrix, so this is something that I wanted as a kid, and I actually hated the fact that my mom told me I couldn't get it because it was for special, aka rich people. Um, but I think that just motivated me to get my own. And yeah, so I got this bag when I went to, I think, Paris for the second time. It's so weird. I got this before I turned my hair teal and I would have never known that this would have foreshadowed it. Um, but I never wore it because I thought it was too matchy matchy. But now, I can. So I kind of love how tacky this whole outfit is. I love this shirt because it's kind of weird in that it really does remind me of like a baby shirt from like Oshkosh Bagosh like in the early 90s. But I got it from Target when I worked with them on my body neutrality video and then I'm wearing these Balenciaga pointed stiletted heels, mules. And they remind me so much of when Ashley Simpson would wear really tacky punkish clothes with stilettos and I just thought she looked so cool. In JoJo's Leave Get Out video, she also wears orange stilettos with like flare jeans and I loved it. Also, another way that I've been reinventing myself, toys. As you saw probably in one of my vlogs, I got myself a Christmas gift, which is Kinetic Sand. Basically the story of this is, I used to watch this on Nickelodeon, the commercials all the time, and um, there's a bunch of TikToks where they cut the Kinetic Sand, and one day I was like, I wanna do that, that looks like so much fun. And then I had this thought like, why don't you, Amy? Like, you have money, you can afford it. So I went to Target, I bought a Kinetic Sand play kit. I don't know when there was like that slime obsession, but I was secretly making slime at midnight all the time by myself with Elmer's Glue and Contact Solution. So I found these two neon yellow and pink slimes. I absolutely love this. Every Asian girl, if not just every little girl growing up, loved the Sanrio store. But if you're like me, you know, single household income, you know, mom was working. I always loved Sanrio, but obviously couldn't buy anything. Like one piece of gum is like $5 there, you know? It was like the, the pieces of gum that would lose flavor in one second, but they were so expensive because of the branding was so cute in that white cardboard box. Anyways, so I actually got this Hello Kitty. It's like fur, like mohair kind of vibe. And it's like a bag. I basically bought a style bundle off of my friend Julie and she included this and I just think it's absolutely legendary. It has like an agenda, it has like your contacts and it's just so nostalgic. I absolutely love it. And then, obviously I bought some bubbles. This is like 99 cents. Did anyone else forget how amazing blowing bubbles is? Oh, that was pretty weak. These two are probably the. Sh I'm probably gonna stop buying toys at this point, but I used to love 
Polly Pockets more than Barbies because they were small and I love the rubber or like silicone outfits you could always put on them and they were just so cute. I just typed in vintage 2001. It's so crazy that that's 20 years ago. Vintage 2001 Polly Pocket set new and I got this and I found one. It's like she has like brown hair with pink stripes and she's kind of like she looks really punk i always wanted these blingers it's like where you rhinestone your hair so i wanted to do this with you right now <laughs> okay i loaded it <gasps> cool <gasps> oh my god yeah i want to do the other side oh my gosh how cute what happened? I feel like it would be more effective to just like hand place these, these sticker rhinestones on your head. But I look cute. Oh my god, I love these stickers or these rhinestones. I'm living. Okay. Another gift that I got from my management actually, and this is like a toy, but I feel like this is a toy that is really trending right now and that is this karaoke bluetooth mic so basically you just link it to your phone let's go don't wait this night's almost over and ever and ever why not why not do a crazy chance why not do a crazy dance i apologize to your ears I also am going to have a playlist down below called Y2K Queen of all my favorite early 2000s music. The first song is No Scrubs by TLC. So good. Now, let's go into the mind part, which is just books and podcasts that I really want to share with you. This is also my manifestation journal. It's Lisa Frank. I got it off eBay as well. And I used to have so much Lisa Frank as a kid because it was so affordable. It was one of the more affordable brands, but this was actually $10 off eBay. And I basically just write affirmation, manifestations, and any homework that I have from um, other development classes, like other courses I'm taking. And like, here's one of the exercises. And I just put a bunch of Lisa Frank stickers around it because it makes me happy. Affirmations, it's good to feel good. This is Marianne Williamson's A Return to Love. I actually read this book twice because it was that healing. It is just the sp spiritual companion that you need. It talks about forgiveness, the spirituality of like body weights and how we feel about ourselves it has to do with romantic relationships, partnerships, anger, health career I had it for a long time but um, it's only now that I decided to pick it up and it really really resonates with me and she was actually one of the presidential candidates most recently and she was the probably only one that her campaign was really based on doing repayment for financial repayment for um, what happened during slavery and I was very much so on board with that because there's so much racial inequity because of there was no, no, what is the word? There was no like reconciliation. I know, in, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. It's like the tip of the tongue phenomenon. But anyways, it's basically her reflections on A Course in Miracles, which is like also a very spiritual book um, that many uh, spiritual thought leaders teach from. And I would love to read that book um, next, but I just know it's really dense. A New Earth, Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. This is all about ego and the matrix and how this world has become like a dysfunction. She also talks about these. These are two books that will really illustrate the idea to you that we live in a matrix. This is just your avatar and, you know, life on planet Earth is like, just one part of the journey and we're consciousness not we're not the bodies we're not the feelings we're not the thoughts we are consciousness we are the observer of thoughts so these two books i highly recommend reading and i keep both of them really close to me because i'm always highlighting and rereading passages and then lastly this is gabrielle bernstein's the universe has your back this is more of a practical way to add spiritual practices into your life such as meditation prayer and asking for signs from your spirit guides and ancestors and um, this book actually is the one that got me into asking for signs from my guides because if you didn't know i've been working on getting a sleeve and in march i have another appointment to kind of do the inside and i've always loved tattoos but for the longest time because of what my parents thought mainly my parents because i love them so much i didn't want to do that and i just felt like they would disown me and i got into so much trouble and 
you know with my baby tattoos but then one day I realized like this is my avatar and you have to live life for you so I ended up getting these two big pieces that made it absolutely look like I'm working on my sleeve now and I had so much anxiety and I wasn't sleeping right and I remember she said to ask for a sign to see if you're on the right path and so I just and it can be anything she asked for an owl and I asked for a sea turtle. I was like, it can't be a turtle, I want it to be a sea turtle. And getting specific can help you out as well because it, it's kind of like you just put in your order and then you forget about it. You don't keep seeking it or trying to find it. It's like you put in your order once to the universe and then if you're on the right path, your spirit guides will show you. And it's also a sign if you don't see your sign, right? Because it means that you're not on the right path. So when I booked the appointment, I said I want to see a sea turtle if I'm doing the right thing, if I'm doing on, if I'm on the right path. Because I had so much anxiety and fear for what how my parents would react. It was a week, and I kind of just forgot about it. And then right as I was driving to the appointment, appointment, um, I was going on the highway, and I remembered the sign, and I was like, oh, I'm really sad that I didn't get the sign, but it doesn't matter. Like I'm still gonna go do this anyways because it feels right for me, and and this is my life. And I kid you not, as I was going on the highway, there was this giant mural and I was like, oh my god, it's so teal and so pretty because, you know, it's like the color of my hair. And I saw this giant mermaid. As I was like thinking all this, I was like, oh, like my eyes were fixated on this mural. I was, you know, stopped at a stoplight before I got into the highway. I was like, oh wow, this is a really pretty mermaid, like after all that thought. And then I was like, what's that tiny thing next to the mermaid? And then I was like, oh my gosh, wait! It's a sea turtle! And I was completely spooked because I had forgotten about the sign, I wasn't seeking it, I was like, just finished that thought of being like, I guess I didn't get my sign, but it's okay because I know this is right for me. And then like, just happened to look at the mermaid and then I was like squinting my eyes, I was like, what's that little thing? And I was like, oh my gosh, it's a sea turtle. And so I got my sign and long story short, my parents and I did get into an explosive massive fight about my tattoos but it was one that was actually um, for me quite healing because I got to say how I truly felt and I felt like it was the last argument and last conflict we were going to have about my tattoos as an adult. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you want to check out T3 down below, there's going to be a link. Be sure to click it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!